You made it twice so far. I'll talk very slow. No. Okay, uh, we're ready to get started. We have a blot and a half tonight, starting at the bottom of Kuf Nun Beis Amud Beis. We'll be learning all of Kuf Nun Gimel and Kuf Nun Dalit Amud Aleph, wrapping to the top of Kuf Nun Beis, Kuf Nun Dalit Amud Beis, and then just uh, Hashem, just a couple of days left. Let's get started. Uh, we were in the middle of discussing uh, about Mason and the unique story where uh, where Rav Nachman was speaking to a mace and the whole dialogue that we saw yesterday. Um, somewhat connected, we are now going to see a little bit uh, of a different conversation that happened. Four lines from the bottom of the page, Kufnun Beis Mid Beis, says the Gemara as follows. Amar leha hu mina, my Gemara says mina, I see, I know others say tzaduki. There was a, a heretic, the uh, Rebbe Abbo, and he said to Rebbe Abbo, Amrisu, you guys told me, nishmasen shal tzadikim gnuzos tachas kisei akavu. We learned that yesterday, that the souls of those who are righteous can be found underneath the throne of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, so says the Gemara, but if that's true, Uba Tamia, these are people who speak to the dead, Hecha Aske the Shmuel Benigida, then how did it work out that Shaul was able to call down Shmuel by using this form of speaking to the dead? How did it all work out? Omar Leir of Nachman said, You're right in principle, but Hasan Besoch Shnima Sarchodesh Shabbat. That was within the first 12 months. The Tanya, the Brysa says, Kol Yud Beis Chodesh, Gufo Kayam, Benishmasa Olavi Orendis. For the first 12 months, the Guf is still Kayam, the body is still intact. And because the body is still intact, the neshama is Olav Yored. It goes up to Shamayin and it also comes back down to visit the mace. However, last line, Lachar Yod Beis Chodesh, Haguf Batel. After 12 months, the body is considered to have been disintegrated. The neshama so Olav, the neshama does go up. Vishu Vena Yoredis. And at that point, it doesn't return down. That's how he answered the Tzaduki to say that, yes, you're right, in general, um, they, are, they are part of the Kisei HaKavod, but uh, within 12 months, it's possible to call down a neshama. Not something that you should try at home. Top line Kufni Gimel Maral. Amar Yehuda Bereder of Shmuel Bar Shilas or Bar Shila, according to some, Ishmei the Rab may have spado shall Adam Nikar who Ben Ben Haolam Habahu Im Lab. Just from the Hespit, all, that's all you need to know if a person is Zocha to Olam Haba. Says Rashi. Top Rashi the Ramas from Ben Olam Habahu Sheim Kasher Haya Hakol Bochan Alav Umoridin Demaos Umesaprin Shvachol. Three features. How do we know that a person is Kasher? The room is crying. Uh, the room has tears. And people say, say positive things about him. Amy, is that really true? That if it's just this natural response in the room? But how can that be? Rav, the Rav Shmuel Bar Shilas. Rav says to Rav Shmuel Bar Shilas, Achim Behespeda. When it comes to my Hespeda, I want you to be very warm. Achim, from the word Cham. I want you to be very warm about me. Dehasam Kaimna. What does that mean? Take a look at Rashi, fourth line of Rashi, the Brahmas called the Hasam Kaimna. The Shah says, But I'm going to be there during the Hespeda. Be'eshma, and I'll hear. Eich tischameim, how warm you're going to be, Alma. What do we see from here? Itzrich lerav leazhure a haspede. Rav had to warn about his hespid. The chayven the rav gaver rav ben olam haba the lama le laazhure haomar may haspedo nikar. You shouldn't have to do anything. If you're a ben olam haba, then you don't have to do anything special. Your hespid will generate, like Rashi said, those three features. It's going to be crying. There's going to be tears. People are going to say nice things about you. Why did Rav have to indicate? What had to be done? Speak warmly about me. No, you don't have to speak warmly. You can speak regular. Your quality will shine through. Says the Gemara, Lokasha, ha de mechamu achim, ha de mechamu achim. It depends. Sometimes when there's, a, just to use our parlance, when there's more of a tragedy, so then people will cry much more easily. But when someone was, they lived 120 years, they lived a beautiful life and they died, not everyone's as moved. So when someone lives a full life, then we have to push a little harder to make sure that we make the room cry because then it helps him to, Either it helps him to get an olam haba or it's a simon. A little, is, it a, is it a cause or is it, a, uh, or is it just a, a, an appearance of whatever the case may be? But that's how the Gemara answers this seeming contradiction. Omar le abai le rabba. Wow. Good friends, I hope. So what about you, rabba? Kigon mar desanu le kulu pumpa disay. Everybody hates you. So what's going to happen with you at your funeral? What, what are people going to say? Nobody likes you. Man achim has feda. Who's going to be warm? Who's going to be warm enough to generate the response that you, after a long life, are going to need to indicate that you're a ben olam haba? Omar lei mistaya es at the rabbar rav chanan. I only need the two of you. I don't need the whole room. I need the two of you who know me, who know that I'm a good, I'm a great person. What was, what were they all upset about? Why did they not like him? Rashi immediately to the right. Dibur hamas lo desanu lekulu pum pidusai, pum pidus. He would give Musr to Shmaya. They're all a bunch of tricksters. They're all a bunch of thieves. Okay, that's what it says over there. So that's why they didn't like him. So now we're eight lines down or so. 
This is the conversation taking place in the early Amorayim. Ezehu ben ha'olam haba. What does it take to merit, to become someone who deserves to be an olam haba? Two answers. Omar lei. Number one, a pasuk. Be'oz necha tishmana davar me'acharecha le'mor ze'aderech l'chu vo ki sa'aminu v'chi sa'asmi'ilu. That you, your ears are attuned to and you listen to that which is, which is behind you, that which you hear from Hashem. Lay more to say, this is the path to take to the right or to the left. I'm going to listen to a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That is how one becomes a Ben Olam Haba. Next answer, Rabbi Hanina Amar, Kol Shadas Rabosenu, a, a corrective note here, Kol Shadas Rabosa, uh, your Rebbe, your personal Rebbe. If, if, you, if it's Noche Himenu, if he is getting Nachas Rach from you, that's a good sign. That means it's your Zoche to Olam Haba. So says the Gemara, last of the short lines on the page, back to the conversation we had about people dying. Says the Pasuk, you're going to surround the Shuk, the, uh, the marketplace with Sofdim. What does that mean? What does that mean? The Gemara says here two different options. B'nei Galila, the people who lived up in the Galil, Amrei, you should do things, you should do mitzvahs to help you before someone stands, before your bed after you die, to speak about you. And then a flip language, B'nai Yehuda Amre, I say Dvaram La'achar Mitasva. You should do things before someone stands at the top of your bed. And the Gemara just highlights the low plige. There's no argument here. Marki Asri and Marki Asri, just a question of where they stood when they did the Hespit. Did they stand by the feet or did they stand by the head? Tanan, second of the wide lines, one third of the way down. Hasam Rabbi Eliezer Omer Shuv Yom Echadif Mitasva. This Mitasva, this we know, a famous Gemara. You should do Teshuva the day before you die. Shalu Talmida Bas Rabbi Eliezer. How, how will I know what day that is? I hope it's not tomorrow. How will I know what day it is? He says, You're right. Great point. Maybe it will be tomorrow. Therefore, you should do tshuva today. So what, what, what will the conclusion be? Shlomo HaMelech also added in this idea. And he said, At all times, Yehu begadecha levanim, your clothes should be white. V'sham al roshcha al yachzar, there should always be oil on your head. And we'll see what this means uh, uh, with this mashal and a little bit later as well, toward the end of the parak. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Amar Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, mashal lemelech shezimin es avadav lesuuda. This pasuk is reminiscent of the idea of, of a king inviting, uh, inviting his servants to a meal. V'lo kava lehem zman, he said, come for dinner. But nobody knew what time dinner was. So there's two groups, there's two mindsets. Pikchim, about halfway down, Kufnim Gimel Meral. Pikchim Shembahe, the smart ones, Kishtu Esatz, when they're going to get all decked out and dressed up in their tuxedos. The Yeshu El Pesach Beis And they're going to sit there and wait. I don't know when he's going to open the gates. Amru Klum, Chaser Le Beis you think he's missing anything? He can put out dinner in five minutes. They're always ready for a party in the, in the Beis Melech. Tipshim, the people who are not so wise, Tipshim Shebahen, Halchul Melachta, and they go to work. Amru, they would argue, Klum Torah. How could you prepare a meal without uh, going in the kitchen and cutting the cucumbers and cooking the chicken? It takes time. It takes time. So then the Tipshim said, I have time. So says the Gemara, Pitom, instantly, Bikesh HaMelech Es Avadah. Right away, the doors open, everyone come in. Pikhen Shembahem, the people who made the right call, Nech Shem Everybody's all ready to go, dressed in their, in their finest. Ve'at Tipshim, Nech Nesu Lefanav Shehim they went to work. They're running from work. They got grease on their, on their hands. Uh, whatever they do, they're, they're dirty. Their clothes are dirty. So Kodesh Baruch Hu is very happy with those who, are, uh, who, are, who did right, the Pikchim, and, and he's very unhappy with those who did not do right. Omar, he says, Kodesh Baruch Hu says that those who got themselves already Shekishtu, literally means that they decorated themselves. They're already, they're all dressed up very nicely. They can sit, they can eat, and they can drink. Halalu, the tipshim, shelo kishtu atzman lesuda, yam dubiyiru, they can stand on the side and they can watch. Says the Gemara, chasano shel rabmeir, the son of la rabmeir, mishum rabmeir, Amar quotes his father-in-law and says, no, afhenir and kimisham shen, that doesn't look bad. If you're in the base HaMelech and you're standing on the side, you look like a waiter. You look like you're part of the house. That's, there are worse things out there. Ella, he says, therefore, there's a mistake. It must be something else. Ella, Elu Elu Yoshvin. No, really, they're both sitting at the table, the Tipshim and the Pikchim. Halalu Ochlin Halalu Re'evin. The Pikchim are eating and the Tipshim are starving. Halalu Shosim Halalu Tzmeim. The, uh, t- the Pikchim are drinking and the, the, uh, the Tipshim are thirsty. Shine Emar. And this is what the Pasuk says, which supports this idea. 
כה אמר השם אלוקים, הנה עבודה יאכלו ואתם תרעבו, הנה עבודה ישתו ואתם תמצאו, הנה עבודה ישמחו ואתם תבושו. That's the full pasuk as I read from inside. Let's read it here. I think that's all. It's not an exact quote from here. כה אמר השם, הנה עבודה יאכלו ואתם תרעבו, הנה עבודה ישתו ואתם תצמו. You guys are going to be thirsty, while all the pichim will have had what to drink. הנה עבודה ירונו מטוב לב, ואתם תצעקו מכאב לב. We'll hear songs of joy from the pichim, and we'll hear screams of pain from the tipshim. The most important word, according to the Baalei HaMusar, on this page is pitom. Suddenly, the Kaddish Baruch Hu will beckon that we will come to the door. A day that we may not want, but a day that will occur. Yitzhak Hashem, we're 120 years old after living full and fulfilling lives. But that day is not, not in our control. The pitom is, are we going to be ready when called upon? Dabarachar, just another way to understand the Pasuk that we started with uh, about 10 lines ago, uh, we said that your garments should be white, your strings, your tzitzis should be white. What does the Pasuk mean when it says that you should not lack any oil on your head? That is a reference to tefillin. That's one of the reasons why we say when we put on our tefillin, the tov tarik al shiva kne ha Shiva kne ha the two shins on the side of the, the of the Shalrosh, three, uh, a three-arm shin on one side and a four-arm shin on the other. That's what the Pasuk means, referencing that Tzfilin has a reference here of, she- of Shemin. There's also a, a tshuva of, uh, of Rav Yashiv in his Sefer. I'll just blank the name. Kovetz Tshuvos, I think is the name of the Sefer. He speaks about wearing Tchilas. And one of the concerns is that the, the garment is supposed to be white. If the garment is white, the strings are supposed to be white. So you can just wear Tchilas. It's a shayla on the poskin because if we don't have a Mesora, on the, uh, on the treles, so then who gives you the right to change the color of your strings to blue? So that's a shayla on the post. So there's, obviously, she does the kanu the kan. We see that it, there are a significant, noticeable minority of people who wear treles. You have to ask shayla about that. If you're allowed to change the color, I, it might be a mitzvah deresa, maybe, but if you say that there has to be a misora on which, what the chilazon actually is, then there's no mitzvah deresa. There's nothing to talk about. And then your garment should be white. As this drasha says, that if it's the begadech levanim, Elu tzitzis, Baruch Hashem. Hadron alach shol, hadron alach shol, hadron alach shol. Yerazim, we should come back to this page in seven and a half years. New parak, the final parak of Masecha Shabbos, a parak mi shehichshich. This will get into some halachic issues about what to do when one is coming home, um, they're carrying things, and they're in a place where they're not allowed to carry, but the sun has set upon them. Opens up the final parak, kuf nun gimel amad aleph, at the new parak, two-thirds of the way down. It's getting dark on Friday afternoon. What do you do? You've got your wallet in, in your pocket. No, same key, so enough for you give it to a non-Jew. That's priority number one. If we're going in a, a pecking order, that's how, again, the ideal is to get home early. The second ideal is to give it to a, a nachri. If there is no nachri with you, you can place it on top of a donkey. When you get to the outer courtyard of your house, then, you can take anything off the donkey that's allowed to be carried. However, that with that which is muksa, the Shabbos, matir hachaval, and you can just kind of loosen the ropes, vasak and ofle me'ale, and they can just fall off on their own. I have to be sensitive to the animal as well. That's why we can't leave it there. Tzar balichayim, some other concerns as well. So therefore, you're allowed to loosen those kalim that are even that are otherwise even that otherwise would be muksa. Opens the Gemara. My tana shor le rabban the mace of kisei lenachri. What is happening here? Just because you forgot your wallets, you can violate the yisur derabanan of Amir la'akum. That's your bad. It's not like it's a Torah mitzvah. You're not asking them to turn on a light in the dining room that's pitch black currently, and you're, you have 30 people for company, and it's Friday night. There we have a whole reason to rely. You forgot, you got home late. Even if there was trouble, but it's not serving a mitzvah. So it says the Gemara, because we have a psychological slash halachic assumption. Kim lehulu rabban, and the rabbis were of the opinion. A person is not always trustworthy when it comes to their own money. We're afraid of the following. Ilo shari slay, if we don't allow him, to violate this Isser de Rabbanon and hand it to a Nachri, we are concerned that he may, due to his emotional connection to the money he's carrying, we're afraid that he may end up carrying it in Rishus HaRabim Arba Amos. Omar Rava, Rava looks at this and just adds a qualification, Dafka Kiso, this only applies to that which is in his pockets. Aval Mitziah, but if you find an object on the ground, that we don't allow you to violate the Isser de Rabbanon. There you cannot go over to a Nachri and say, oh, I found a $100 bill. Can you just bring it to my house? That's awesome. That's not allowed. You're not allowed to violate the Yisr Darabon of Amir al-Akum for an object that you find on the road. It says the Gemara, Pshita, that's obvious. What does our Mishnah say? Kisotznai, that which is in your pocket, that which you're carrying. It says the Gemara, no. 
I might have argued that maybe it's even an object that I find along the path. And the fact that the Mishnah used the word kiso, it was being nonchalant, it was an approximation. That which you have with you, that which is in your pocket, that, that is not the case. The word kiso is, uh, is specific and not a metzia. And then the Gemara says, Velo Amran, when do we exclude a metzia? When? That's only true, Ela Delo Asiliade. That's if you haven't picked it up yet. Aval Asiliade Kikisadam. However, once you pick it up, then we do treat it like it's something that's in your pocket, and then we allow that to be to join the other items that you give to the guy as, it, as the, the sun is setting on you on a Friday night. Ika de Amre, some have this, um, this uh, concept a little bit differently, this concept that Rava is teaching us about the Mitzia, and a little bit more uh, potentially lenient. Let's see. Ika de Amre, boy, Rava, Mitzia habaliado mahu, what would be the din if it reached your hand? Now, the previous Gemara, with, this, with the previous iteration, didn't debate this. It was very obvious what the case was. If it's in your hand, then it's kiso, and you can put it on the, you can give it to a guy. And if it's not in your hand, it's a mitzia, and you're not allowed to move it at all. You can't give it to a guy. But here, the Gemara asks it as, as a question. Rubble wanted to know, mitzia, baliyado, once I pick up the object, what's the din? Do we say, cave unto us, aliyade kikise? Now that I picked it up, it's like something that was in my pocket already, and therefore, I am allowed to, um, I'm allowed to add it onto the donkey. I'm allowed to give it to the guy. Sorry, we'll talk about the donkey. We're allowed to give it to a guy. I mean, no, you found it along the way. You didn't schlep it. The, all of a sudden, this is your new uh, item. It's your new favorite toy. You, you found it five minutes ago. So maybe we would have had a limitation there. The Gemara says, take you, we're not sure. So these two iterations have, would have halachic implications because tachlitz, what would happen? We don't know the answer according to the take you. The second iteration is unclear. The first is much more clear. Two dots, five, six lines from the bottom of the page. Our Mishnah, if you if just keep one finger here, look at the top line of this Mishnah. It says, what if there is no guy? So then you can use a chamor. Then you can put something, oh, so the Gemara makes a quick deal. The reason why you're allowed to use the donkey is because the any monachri. But if there is a guy, then we prefer to use the guy over the animal. Why is it that we prefer to use a guy over a chamor if we have the opportunity? Says the Gemara, because chamor atamitzuve al shvisaso. We know we have a principle of shvisas behima. That's a din doraisa. We are not allowed to have our animals do work for us on Shabbos. So if we have a nachri where the iser we're going to violate is Mr. Deravanan, it's better to use him than to use the chamor, where potentially we're going to be violating the iser of shvisas behemto. And nachri i atamitzuve al shvisaso. By a goy, a goy is not allowed to be Shabbos. We're not allowed to have a goy keep Shabbos. The Rambam quotes says, goy shabbos chayv misa. So What's happening here is the Gemara is saying that we need to prioritize how we are going to get our stuff home. We start with the guy, lowest level of Isser, and then if he's not available, then we go to the Chamor. We'll have to figure out why is that mutter. Maybe it's not mutter. You're not Shvisas Bamta. We're going to get into that today a lot. Let's talk about some other preferences of order. What if you have a Chamor? Option number one is a donkey, which is our second best option in the Mishnah. And the other category is Vecher Shot Vakata. So you have a donkey or you have a child, or a cheresh, or whichever it is. So which one do we prefer? Says the Gemara, a chamor monachle. It's better to put it on the donkey. Le cheresh ot v'katan lo yaybe. We should not give it to, the, to those who have no das. Again, the common denominator of cheresh ot v'katan is that they have no das. It's typically what we assume. Yeah. So the chamor takes preference. My time up because hani adam, hai lab adam. Because these are people. Af al that they have no das, but they're still people. We don't say that someone who has... No das is equivalent to a chamor. They're still a ben adam. They're still a person. They just have no das. So the Gemara says it's better to give it to the chamor who is a chamor as opposed to giving it to a cheresh of a katan who, um, who will, will, is a, at least a person. Three lines from the bottom. What if you have a cheresh and a shota? Really chiseling down here. You have a cheresh to someone who can't uh, hear or speak. And you have a shota, someone who doesn't have all of their mental faculties. The thing is you give it to the shota, the cheresh is more capable. So we would want to give it to the shota. What about shota of a katan? Someone who's lost their mental faculties or never had them in a katan, you give it to the shota. What if you had a cheresh, you had a deaf mute, and you had a child? Who is it better to give to? So says the Gemara Aliba, Rabbi Eliezer, Loti Bailah. This question of whether or not we should give it to a cheresh or to a katan on Arab Shabbos as we're getting towards Shkia, that's not a kasha, according to Rabbi Eliezer. Because the Tanya, Rabbi Yitzchak Omer, Mishum Rabbi Eliezer, turning to the top of Kufnin Gimel Amud Beis, Trumas cheresh. Lo seite lechulin. If a cheresh were to give truma, it is not chulin. Mipnei shu suffix because he has a suffix status, which means 
that he's a something. So therefore, according to him, we know that he's going to, to have a, a status of his own. So that's not the question. When do we have a question about whether or not we should give it to the Cheresh or the Katan? That's only in regards to the sheet of the Rabbana. What do the rabbis hold? The rabbis, this is the, uh, one of the opening mission of Masechus Trumos, it's non Five people are not supposed to give truma, and even if they do, it's a zero. Eluhein, cheresh, shota, vekatan, veatorim esheino shelo, venachresh, shatarim eshel Yisrael afilu brushuso, ein trumas no truma. These are the five categories according to the Rabbanon, where even if you give truma, it's a zero. A cheresh, a shota, and a katan. Now, this is already we can see the Rabbanon's question because cheresh and katan are put in the same camp. Rabbi Eliezer was of the opinion that if a cheresh does something, it at least generates a safe. It's a something in regards to truma, so it can't go out to chulin. But the Rabbanon hold that a cheresh and a katan are in the same plane as it relates to truma. So therefore, what should be the din there that we don't know? So says the Gemara, my the cheresh yahi the katan asi lechlal das. Do we give it to the cheresh because the cheresh doesn't have das, and at least the katan will have das when he's older? O dilma, or perhaps the katan yahi the cheresh asi lachlute begadol diteach. Or do we say it's better to give it to a katan who right now is a katan, whereas a, a cheresh, at least someone might confuse him with a gadol pikeh, with a normal, healthy adult. So therefore the Gemara is torn, and we don't have an answer. Ika da amre le cheresh yahibleh, ika da amre le katan yahibleh. And we have shitas lakan lakan as to whether or not we would prefer to uh, give this item that you are carrying as it gets dark on you and you're walking into Shabbos. Is it better to give it to the cheresh or, or to the katan? Different shitas here in the Gemara. So says the Gemara, what do we do in the following scenario? About a quarter of the way down on Kufnan and Gimel and Beis. Ein sham lo nachri velo chamor velo cheresh velo shota velo katan ma. What if you have nobody? There's nobody around, no options. You don't have a, a, a nachri, you don't have a chamor, no cheresh shota velo katan, nothing. What do you do? Amr v'itzcha, oda cheres, I said, there really was another solution. Velo ratzu chachamim legalosa. But the chachamim, they didn't want to reveal this upcoming solution. It was too risky. My oda cheres, I said, where, by the way, where did this take place? It took place in the attic of Hanania, which we learned about 130 blot ago, 135 blot ago on Daf. I think it was after Ches test somewhere around there. So there was my Oda Cheres Haisa. So says the Gemara, Molicho Pachos Pachos Mi Daladamos. As long as your intervals of movement are less than Daladamos, there will be no moment in which you violate the Isra of carrying. There will be an Akira and a Hanacha. Remember, these are the features of violating the Isra of carrying. You need an Akira and you need a Hanacha and you need either Dalad Amos or Shinoi Rishus. But if you're missing any of those features, then the only issue you've done is Midra Banan. So says the Gemara, if you have no other option, what you should do is walk Pachos, Pachos, Mid Dalad Amos. Says the Gemara, Amai lo ratzu chachamim legalosa. We're learning about it on Kuftim Gimel. Why didn't the chachamim back in the day want to talk about it? Answers the Gemara, Mishum, because the Pasuk says, Kavod Elohim haster davar, uchvod malachim chakor davar. We were afraid about Kavod Shamayim. Says the Gemara, what are you talking about? What's, what's the concern? You're, you're not even violating an Isra Doraisa, it's an Isra Dorabana. Says the Gemara, you're right that right now it's only an Isra Dorabana, but Dilma, one third of the way down, Dilma, Asila Asuye, Daladamos, Bershus Harav. It's so easy to make a mistake. We have to work with our psychology. Once you start walking, it's not natural to pause every five, every five feet. It's not normal. That's two strides on. Uh, like in our city blocks out here, you walk outside, the average square, it's a five foot by five foot square approximately. Be'erech, that's about uh, Dalad Amos. Let's say it's a foot, another foot longer. It's not natural to stop walking like that. So we're afraid that the Kavod Shemayim will be, will be violated when a person accidentally walks too far. Tanya, Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, Bo Bayom, Gad Shusa'a. That day in, uh, in, the, uh, in the attic of Hananya, Gad Shusa'a, they... They, uh, they filled up the, uh, the saw, they filled up the container all the way to the top, flowing over. It was beautiful, all of these mitzvot. Rabbi Yeshua argued the other way, it was too much. Amru, Omer, Bobayom, Machkusa. No, you made it more difficult to keep these halakhot. Tanya, we have a brisa that supports um, a mashal for each of them. Mashal, the Rabbi Eliezer, who was of the opinion that having more of these takanos were good. The Mahadavar Dome. Lekupa, Malaya, Kishun, and Dulun. You have a basket and it's filled with cucumbers and it's filled with larger vegetables. What do you do with all the empty space? So says the Gemara, we're going to make takanos chazal. Adam nos in the socha chardal zekes. No problem. The chardal fits in there perfectly. Why can't we do that? That's a great idea. That's the sheet of Rabbi Eliezer. And the mashal halfway down on kuf nun gimel amud beis. Mashal de Rabbi Yeshua lamad of Adoma. What is it comparable to? Ba'arev amle advash. You have a pot and it's filled with honey. No, same the socha rimonu ve'egozim. 
What happens if in that pot you put in pomegranates, you put in nuts, behemakia, it, it overflows the edges. Makia in Hebrew literally means to, to vomit. The basket can't handle it. So this is the, an interesting chakira. This is like the principle we have in halacha that in gozer na latzibor, ela in kain hatzibor yecholun lamudva. Was it good what they did in the Aliyah Shel Hananya? Did they add too many restrictions, like Rabbi Yeshua, or did they add a good amount of restrictions, which was the sheet of Rabbi Eliyah? Oh, Amar, halfway down. Eini mo nachri, we said, manicho al chamor, that's our Mishnah. Our Mishnah said that your, if your number one option is not available, that we should give what we are carrying to a nachri. The second best option is manicho al chamor. We put it on the donkey. Why? Why is that allowed? It's shvisas behemto. You're not allowed to make your animals work for you on Shabbos. I'm allowed to take my stuff and put it on a donkey. That's us, sir. I can't make him do my work for me. That's the sir. It says the Gemara, a whole bunch of approaches. Here, let's see. No, well, yeah, you can put it down, but because the animal's walking, when you put it down, it's not considered a hanacha. So you remove the Isr del Raisa. Because if it's an Isr del Raisa for you, then your animal can't do it. You can't have them plow the field on Shabbos. So how do we work it out? You put it on the animal while he's walking. That's not called an, a Hanukha. Fine. Says the Gemara, Yefshar Mayim. Animals go to the bathroom when they want. There's no way he's not going to stop to urinate. Ulahatil Gilolim to defecate. Vika So you put it down. At some point, he's going to stop walking and start again. Stop walking and start again. So then it should not, it should be Mechamer. It should be a violation of Shri Behemto. Says the Gemara, When we put it down, it's while he's moving. And when I see that he's about to stop, Shiomedes, note lo hemena. Then I take it off again and I continue walking so that we have this kind of moving back and forth of the item from the back of the chamor to in my hands to make sure that there's no akira behana. Says the Gemara, If that's true, you left out a blaring option. Well, if I put it on your shoulders, we just pass it back and forth. What about Shtayim Sha'asahua? Well, that we learned already many times. Why can't two people carry? Why were, not, why were these not suggested? Omar oh, Papa, you're not allowed to do that. Because Kol Shebegufo Chayev Chatas Bechavero Patrav Alasar. Had it been that you yourself did what you're trying to circumvent, if it would have been a Chatas, then even though using your friend would have been less bad, but it's still an Esr Derabon and not allowed, Bechavero Patrav Alasar. And as well, Anything that would have been an Isser Derabanan by your friend, the Chamorah Mazur Lechatchila. Then, under these circumstances, then we're allowed to use a Chamor. Amar Abad Baraba, the last, the first of the longest lines, Kuvnan Gimelam Beis, three fourths of the way down. What if it's on my shoulder and all of a sudden, like, I, I have to run now because, like, it's Mamishkiyam, or and we have a, a watch, we know exactly, it's Shkia now, what am I doing? So says the Gemara, here's another piece of advice. What do we do when we have no other option? You run. Dafka runs, but you have to run. Why? Because if you're going to walk, taking regular strides, that won't work. Because my timer, because you're doing everything normal, we're afraid that because you're walking normal, you'll also by accident inadvertently violate the issue of caring by doing a hekira and a Says the Gemara, but so so kimata lebeise, fine. But once you get home, run, good, run. So no akira, you're doing good. But when you get home, yefshar delo kai porta, you have to slow down at some point. Become an ayel, and when you do, you're going to transfer rishus me rishus harav rishus hayachim. At some point, you're going to violate the iser. So running, okay, running helps for the first ninety nine percent. But when you break the threshold of your property into a rishus hayachim, you're a sinner. You've done something wrong. Says the Gemara, clever way to get out of the Yisr Deraisa, the Zorik Lekela Achar Yad. So let's say I'm running, the Shtender right here is the beginning of the threshold. So I have my item and I just kind of flip it backhandedly into the new Rishusa that's only Yisr Derabana because I transferred Rishuyos, but I did so Kela Achar Yad. So that, says the Gemara, is a, a reasonable answer, the Zorik Lekela Achar Yad. Ten lines from the bottom. Omar Rabbi Barchama, Hamechamer Achar Behemto Beshabbos. A person who does, in fact, use their animal on Shabbos, the shogeg chayev chatas b'mezil chayev skila. Wow, we got to be very careful here, says Rami Barham, excuse me, because we're talking about classical Isuri Doraisa. And if you did it b'shogeg, you're going to be chayev chatas. And if you did it on purpose, you're chayev skila. My time, Omar, this has to be Rabba, because we'll see that Rabba will soon argue against the shita of Rami Barham. Omar Rabba, the Omar Kra, the Pasuk says, 
Why is it that, that it's Mr. Daraisa? Lo sase kol malacha ata uvhemtecha. Behemto dum yodidei. The behema is ata uvhemtecha. You and the animal are the same. What's the, what's the heckish? Ma'ahu b'shogei chayv chatos b'meizid chayv skila. Just like you, the human being, if you did a b'shogei your chayv a korban, and if you did not provision your chayv skila, av behemto nami b'shogei chayv chatos b'meizid chayv skila. So Rabba, in explanation of Rami Barhama says, well, no different than our animal. It's a pasuk in the Torah. It's a hekesh. Ata uhem techel. You're the same. And had you as a human being been done that iser, you would have been b'shogei chayv chatos and b'meizid chayv skila. The same would be true if you use an animal. Omar Rava, Rava says, no way. No way that by, that by Muhammad you're chai v'chat. That's not possible. Omar Rava, stay true with the I don't agree with you. Chada, first of all, d'chsiv Torah achas yalochem lo'ose b'nefesh, lo'ose b'shkaga b'nefesh asher ta'ase b'yad rama, huk shakol ha-Torah kulo la'avod ha-Zara. Every iser in the Torah has an aspect of it which is comparable to avod ha-Zara. How so? Four lines from the bottom. Ma'avod ha-Zara da'avid ma'ase b'gufei. Just like by Avodah Zarah, in order to be chayv on Avodah Zarah, there has to be a maisa. It's not just a machshava. The machshava is bad enough, but it has to be a maisa too. Hachanami by every other iser. Ad avid maisa begufe. That's the only way you're, you're ever going to be chayv. So you, Rami Bar Chama, you didn't do a maisa. The shvisas behemto did the maisa. The animal did the maisa. You put it on the animal, but he did the malacha. So it says that's not comparable to the cases of Avodah Zarah. So how could you say that you're chayv at all? That's not the way this works. It's not doing the Davod Zara. The Odin furthermore says, Rava, arguing against Rami Bar Chama. It's not, and we learned in the Mishnah, Let's say that on Shabbos, a person does something, they do an action, that their Chayav al Gasol Chatas, the action that you do, the Shogeg, um, brings about a Chayav Chatas, the Al Zedon, and had you done it on purpose, Skiva, what's implied from there, says the Gemara? Michlal, what's implied is as follows. To Ikamidi, there is a scenario, the Ein Chayavan al Shigigas Ochatas, the Lo Al Zadon Okaris. That there could be a scenario where you're not going to be Chayav Ochatas and you're not going to be Chayav uh, Skila if, if it's Bizadan on purpose. Umay Nihu, what is that? Rav de Mechamer, Rav says. So I don't understand why your answer is difficult on two fronts. Again, it's not comparable to Avodah Zarah. And then this Mishnah that we have, that we're going to learn momentarily again, we're going to learn this Mishnah a couple times, the Mishnah from the third line from the bottom, that Mishnah could, could very well be about Mechamer. The inference works out perfectly. So maybe you're not Chayv at all. Says the Gemara, Lo, no, I could still explain that Mishnah according to the Shita of Rami Bar Chama, that there's an Isra Daraisa of Shri Sasbamta, because what was that Mishnah talking about? Where you do an Isra Daraisa, but with no consequence? Says the Gemara, Lo, Tchumen Ve'aliba Der Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, big machlokas in the Tanaim. Do we say that Tchum Shabbos, as we spoke about over the last couple of days extensively, if a person violates their Tchum Shabbos, they walk 2,000 amos out of the place where people live, is that an Isser Darais or an Isser Darabana? So Rabbi Akiva was of the opinion that it's an Isser Darais, just without an Onesh. That fits perfectly for this mission that we learned three lines from the bottom of the page. The inference that we saw is that there are times that you have an Isser Darais where there's no Chiyuv, and that's this. According to Rabbi Akiva, or Behavara Ali Bedreb Yosi, or lighting a fire, according to Rabbi Yosi. Bottom Rashi of the page, Ali Bedreb Yosi. We should really just learn both of them. Go up one more line, two lines from the bottom of Ali Bedreb Akiva, the Amar Deoraisa Ninhu. He says that Chum Shabbos is Mr. Deoraisa, Bahavi Mechalel. You did violate Shabbos. You mean you ain't Lo Al Shigi Gasol Chatas. There's no onish, even though you violated a Mr. Deoraisa. Next Rashi, the Ramas Ali Bedreb Yosi, the Amar Beperk Lal Gadol, Havara Lelav Yatsas. Havara, the reason why the Torah specifically spoke about um, Havara is because it was to teach you that there is a lav involved here and that there would be no, uh, no particular ownership of, uh, of skill. So fine. So that all works out according to Rami Bar Chama. But let's take version number two of Rami Bar Chama. Turning to the top of Kupnan Dalit, Amud Aleph, let us continue. Rav Zvid Masni Hachi. Rav Zvid taught Rami Chama Bar, Rabbi, Rami Bar Chama's din as follows. Amar Rami Bar Chama, HaMecham Erachar Behema B'Shabbos. Let's say that a person violates Mechamer, they take something that they're carrying, then right before Shkia, they put it on the animal's back, on, a, on the Chamor's back, says the Gemara, B'Shogeg, Eino Chayev Chatas, you do B'Shogeg, there's no Korban to be brought, and in sharp contrast, B'Mezid Chayev Skila, that's very strange. Normally, we would say that they're interconnected, and in fact, that's the Gemara's question. Masi Rabba, three lines from the top, Kufnan Dalam Ra'al, HaMechalel Lesa Shabbos, B'Dav Shechem, Al Shigigas Ochatas, 
Ha, here's the inference from there. If there's no chiyuv chatas, then there's no chiyuv skila. They're interdependent. You can't go from doing an iser and having no chiyuv of a korban if you do it by accident to being chayv chatas. Not, not possible. So says the Gemara, I'm sorry, you put in your own words there. All that was in the Mishnah, if we look at the fourth line of this page, was end of Mishnah. It says the Gemara seven lines down. Miktani ha'ein the diuk that you made that if there is no korban chatas, then there can't be a chiv skila, which was the second version of Rami Barham here on the top of the page. Uh, the Mishnah doesn't say that you said that, and that's not shot in the Mishnah. How so? Because hachi kamar. This is really what that Mishnah was meant to teach us. The line that we know that we've learned davar shachayav and alshigeg asochatas chayav and alzadono skila, and adds the Mishnah v'yesh, and also there's another scenario where davar shein chayav and alshigeg asochatas v'chayav and alzadono skila. My new mechamer. So now the way we've reinterpreted that Mishnah, we tried initially to infer from that Mishnah that if there was no korban chatas, then it's impossible to have a chayav skila. Says the Gemara, that was an inference to be made, but it's not the correct inference of the Mishnah because maybe we could make a, maybe we could say that the Mishnah didn't need to be inferred; it was waiting for you to add to it. And instead of saying, "And therefore, there's no chiyuv uh, skila without a chiyuv chatas," you can say, "And there are cases where there's no chiyuv uh, chiyuv chatas, but there is a chiyuv skila, and that would be mechaner." Halfway down the page, Rava, Achva de Rav Mari Bar Rachel. Rava, who was the brother, we've got to follow the family uh, lineage here for just a moment, just to understand this Gemara. Rava was the brother of Rav Mari Bar Rachel. Why was Rav Mari called Bar Rachel after his mother's name? Rachel was the daughter of Shmuel. Rachel's daughter was unfortunately held captive and was, uh, and was raped and became pregnant with this child who is now Rav Mari. Her father, his name was um, Isur. I think his name was Isur. I'm blanking on his name right now. I just learned this like 15 times today. What does it say here in Rashi? Yes, Isur. Rashi's name is Isur. He was a goy when, when the baby was conceived. So the Gemara says, that's why we, go, we call him Bar Rachel. It's not Mechuba, that Shmuel's uh, daughter conceived was, con, was uh, sorry, hold on one second. I'm, I'm saying something wrong here. Rava Achva, yes, that's correct. So it's not correct. It, it's not nice to say that, it's not so nice to say Bar Isur, who at the time was a goy. The Amrela, some say that no, it wasn't Rava who was talking. It was Avuha de Rav Mari Bar Rachel, the father of Rav Mari, who was the daughter of Rachel, namely Rachel's, co- the person who she cohabited with, Isur. So that can't be, says the Gemara, the Lishna Basra Kashia. The second language implies that the father of the baby was Isur himself. Ha de Rav Achshere the Rav Mari Bar Rachel, Umanye Bepursia de Bavel. It can't be, because Rav Mari was appointed as a leader in Babel, but that's not allowed from the father who is a goy. Even though Isra converted later, as Rashi here highlights, but he was, when, when Rav Mari was conceived of, he was conceived of when the father was not Jewish. So it doesn't make sense that it's him. Answer the Gemara, Dilma Tre Mare Bar Rachel Habu. Maybe you're right. Maybe it wasn't the same exact person. So it would be pretty unique to have a, a, a second Mari who also goes by his mother's name, who happens to be Rachel, but an answer nevertheless to the Gemara suggests. Either way. I, you look at the Arshua, which is weird how they wrote it down, because it's supposed to say Rava was the father of Rav Mari Rava. That Rava was what? The father. It says, the, it just, how does that translate <laughs> in the Gemara? So it says, the Amrili Abuah and Rav Mari Barako. And then it's that Rava was the father of Rav Mari. Oh, the Hagos Habach writes what you're saying. If you look in the Hagos Habach Os Aleph, he writes in the in the parentheses, the Amri La Rava Abuha de Rav. And then it says Tre Rav Mari Bar Rachel Habu. Oh, the Gemara takes out that answer. Te, that's the, the tough Aleph Memon Agosabach, Tevos Elun Mechukin. I don't know. The Gemara doesn't use that language though. Yeah, that's no, added by the Gemara. Like a small line, not a bowl, that said Rava was the father, but the end word was. It's it's very strange. strange. Yeah, I don't have to spend more time looking at that. The Amri La Abuha de Rav Mari Bar Rachel. Logaras. Uh, Rashi takes out the girsa that we have here as well. And that's probably where the Hagos Sabach got what he was coming, where he was going from Manda Garas, Le Garas Bich Basre, Hachi, Hach Lishna Basra Kasha, Hach the Rav Akshare the Rav Mari Barracha. Yeah, okay. I have to get into the 
to the family tree there. But either way, uh, what, whoever this person was, and uh, w- let's see what he said. The Gemara says two thirds of the way down. We have another approach in regards to mechamer, in regards to using an animal on Shabbos, where uh, there seems to be a leniency in the name of Rav Yochanan. Rav Yochanan, here's what he said. What if a person were to utilize their animal as our Mishnah opened a blot ago about Mishihich if you're going into Shabbos and you need to get this off of your get this off of your hands? So says the Gemara, the Shabbos Pater Miklum. And Shabbos there's no chiyuvim at all. The shogeg lo mechayev chatas. When it comes to the sh- korban shogeg, there's no chiyuv. Why? Like we saw, because there's no ma'isa being done here. That's how you chayev by avodah zara. So because there's no ma'isa here, the ma'isa that you did was before Shabbos when you put your item on top of the donkey. That's mutter. The mezid nami lo mechayev. Even if you did it on purpose, you would not be chayev skila. It's non. Hamechala les Shabbos b'davar shechayev and al shigeg gasu chatas v'al zdono skila. And we do accept the following inference. But because we just said two lines ago that you're not going to be chayav achatas because of, it's not hukash la therefore by definition there's no skila. Two lines from the bottom. Even for malkos, you're not going to be chayav because we have a rule. to have Because the, the, the lav that is being utilized here is a, a general lav for misas bezdin. Because there's just no malchus in that case with this type of lav, which was an azharas misas bezin. And as we turn to the top of Kufnim Dalad Amabez, the last line for the night, or almost the last line for the night, even if you want to say that there would be malchus, well, then the Pasuk doesn't make sense. Lichtov Rachmana, we should have left out the word ata. It should have said, Losa se kol melacha. Normally it says, ata uhem techa. So leave it out. Ata lamali. Why do I need the word you? What do we learn from that word ata? Who nihu demechai? He himself. When he does the isra, that's when he would be obligated. But behemto, if his animal was the one, then there would be no malkos, even in that case. Even if you otherwise wanted to say there was skila, in this case, you would not be able to say that there are any onshin. And that is the world of Rav Yochanan. And we do paskin like him in this regard. Behemto, lo, mechaib. If you put it on your animal, there would be no punishments given out. We'll pick up on Shabbos at 6 p.m. on the top of Kuflin Dalit. Beautiful night. Thank you.